So, above discussion uh, implies that implies that at temperature T greater than T B all particles are in excited states and the ground state is essentially unoccupied. But when T is less than T B particles gradually occupy the ground state. Which essentially in the limit T goes to 0 Kelvin contains all the particles in the system. So, so far what we found is when temperature is more than T B all particles are present in the excited state and when T is less than T B, particles gradually fall into the ground state okay. and in the limit of T goes to 0 all particles, uh, the ground state uh, all particles will be present. Okay. So, the particles in the ground state for T less than T B constitute a Bose-Einstein condensation. And the temperature T B is known as Bose temperature. So, Bose Einstein condensation occurs when temperature is lower than a threshold temperature T B. So, below a critical temperature T B, in a system of indistinguishable particles or indistinguishable bosons rather the population of the ground state in a series of quantized 
states becomes very large and discontinuous with the population of population of the excited states. This extra population of the ground state is the Bose-Einstein condensation. So, below critical temperature Tb in a system of indistinguishable bosons, the particle, the population of the ground, ground state in, in a series of quantized states becomes very large and discontinuous with the population of the ground excited states. This extra population of the ground state is the Bose-Einstein condensation. So, the existence of of the Bose-Einstein condensation leads to a dramatic effects in systems in systems of bosons at temperature below Tv, right. So, we now know what is Bose-Einstein condensation, ok. So, we will now discuss about uh, more of this, ok. The population density in the excited state not ground state uh, or excluding ground state in a Bose-Einstein gas is now we are calculating number of uh, particles in the excited state. So, we call it N E x in underscore e x function of epsilon is v by 4 pi to the 2 is v n or n e x epsilon is v by 4 pi square twice m by h cross to the 2 whole to the 3 by 2 and then root over epsilon by b e to the uh, epsilon by k b t minus 1. And suppose this is our equation number 15. The function b is a function of temperature plays the role for the Bose-Einstein distribution is 
that the chemical potential does for the Fermi Dirac distribution. So, the function B plays essentially the same role for the Bose-Einstein distribution as that for the uh, that uh, the chemical potential does for Fermi Dirac distribution. For a Bose Einstein gas, Bt is Bt goes to 1 for T less than Tb and it goes to the function if inverse j 3 by 2 Tb by T to the 3 by 2 for T when T is greater than or equals to Tb. Suppose this is our equation number or expression uh, uh, relation 16. Now, what is this function if? inverse ok. So, the function f inverse the function is the f inverse is the inverse function of of a b and it can be and a b is twice 2 by root over pi integral 0 to infinity root over y by b e to the y minus y 1 dy. Okay, so, this is the expression for a b. So, a b is 2 by root over pi 0 to integral 0 to infinity root over y dy by b e to the y minus 1. The Bose temperature T b is Now, note that since a b goes to 1 by b as b goes to infinity. So, we can write b 1 by zeta 3 by 2 T by T b to the 3 by 2 for T much much greater than T b. And suppose this is our equation number 17. Okay. Now, the total population in the excited state when T is less than T b, if we call 
the population is n underscore e x is v by four pi square times two m by h cross to the two whole to the three by two and zero to infinity root over epsilon d epsilon by e to the epsilon by k v t minus 1 and suppose this is our equation number 18. So, we can the proceed like n e x is v by 4 pi square times twice m k b t by h cross square to the 3 by 2 and 0 to infinity root over y d y is e to the y minus 1. And suppose this is our equation number 19. So, we get n e x is v m k v t by twice pi h cross square to the 3 by 2 times zeta 3 by 2. And so this is equation number 20. Then we can get or we can deduce further like v or n e x is nothing but n t by t b to the 3 by 2 and this is equation number 21. Okay. So, the population if this is the population in the excited state, the population in the ground state is thus the population in the ground state if we call the population in the ground state as n naught then the population in the ground state n naught is n times 1 minus t by t b to the 3 by 2 when t is less than t b. Okay, so, this is the population in the ground state. Next, we consider what is the Bose-Einstein total energy. Okay, for the Bose-Einstein gas, what is the total energy? Okay, so before that, maybe we can uh, plot a naught versus temperature. So if we plot a naught, suppose this is function of t and versus t by t b. So we get this is one. So we get like this. So this is also one here. This is zero. So we get a plot like this. So next we consider, uh, or next we concentrate on the Bose-Einstein gas total energy. If we assume that the ground state is a state of zero energy, then particles in the Bose-Einstein condensation make 
no contribution to the total energy of the Bose Einstein gas. So, the contribution in the total energy will come mainly from the particles present in the excited state, right. Thus, the total energy if we consider total energy as U can be written as epsilon times n number of particles in the excited state n uh, underscore e x and d epsilon and then we have to integrate from 0 to infinity. So, we get this one as V by 4 pi square times twice m by h cross to the 2 whole to the 3 by 2 and 0 to integral 0 to infinity epsilon to the 3 by 2 d epsilon by b e to the epsilon by k b t minus 1. Okay. So, in the above expression, we have used, we have used equation 15 we have used equation 15 for the density of particles in the excited state. So, if we change the variable of integration, we can write, so by changing by changing the variable of integration, the total energy can be written as u is v by 4 pi square then twice m by h cross to the 2 whole to the 3 by 2 then k b t to the 5 by 2 Now, if we use equation 14 of Bose temperature, okay. so if we use now by using by using the expression for Bose temperature, equation 14. Uh, we obtain u is 2 by root over pi zeta 3 by 2 n times k b t times t by t b to the 3 by 2 0 to infinity 
y to the 3 by 2 dy by b e to the y minus 1. Okay. So, at low temperature, means when T is less than T B, we consider or we can take B equals to 1 and the total energy So, we consider two different case, one is low temperature means when temperature is, is lower than and T B and we call it this one as uh, case 1. So, for case 1 at low temperature, we can consider B equals to 1 and the total energy becomes U equals to 2 by root over pi times zeta 3 by 2 then n kbt times t by t by tb to the 3 by 2 then 0 to infinity y to the 3 by 2 dy by e to the y minus 1. So, we get u is 3 zeta 5 by 2 by 2 zeta 3 by 2 times n k b t times t by t b to the 3 by 2. So, we can write u is nothing but 0 0.77 times n k b t t by t b 3 by 2. So, we get a very simple expression when t is less than t b. So, we get a simple expression for total energy when t is less than t b. So, we can write that for t less than T b, u is proportional to T to the 5 by 2. So, this is for low temperature and next we consider high temperature limit or when T is greater than T b. So, next we consider we call it case 2 is at high temperature means when B to when T is much much greater than T B or greater than equals to T B you can write then B is much much greater than 1, thus or so we can write B e to the y minus 1 can be, so B e to the y minus 1 can be approximated as B e to the y. So, total energy thus the total energy becomes u is two by root over pi zeta three by two n k b t. times t by t, t b 
then 1 by b integral 0 to infinity y to the 3 by 2 dy by e to the y. So, we can write e as 2 by 2 times zeta 3 by 2 n times k b t times t by t b t b to the 3 by 2 and then times 1 by b. So, we find, so we can write u is nothing but 3 by 2 in k v t. Okay. So, we can write that, okay. so from uh, equation uh, um, from, from equation number uh, 17, okay, so b equals to one by zeta three by two t by t b to the three by two from equation number seventeen. So, for high temperature limit also, we get a very simple expression of total energy. Okay. Now, from this above uh, expression, we can note that this is the same same result as for the Maxwell <coughs> Boltzmann gas. For Maxwell Boltzmann gas or for from classical statistics, we also found that total total energy is 3 by 2 times n times k v t okay. as we might expect this is expected since since one should should go over to Boltzmann statistics of Boltzmann distribution in the high temperature limit that we discuss above. So, we have uh, obtained the expression for uh, total energy. Now, if we plot total energy versus temperature, so we are plotting T versus T B here and this is U by N K B T B. Okay, so, you get like this. So, this is 1 here, 1, this is 0, okay, so this is 1, and so on. So, that is all about uh, Maxwell Boltzmann and Fermi reject statistics. We next uh, discuss uh, a couple of problems. The first problem is 
the Fermi energy problem 1 the Fermi energy is given by epsilon a p is limit t equals to 0 mu t and for ideal Fermi gas epsilon a p is 3 n by 8 pi v to the 2 by 3 times h to the 2 by twice m. Okay. So, the Fermi energy is given by we know the express the Fermi energy is epsilon a when limit uh, t goes to 0 for chemical potential mu t and for ideal Fermi gas epsilon a we also deduce that expression is 3 n by 8 pi k b 8 pi b to the 2 by 3 times h to the 2 by 2 m. The molar volume next the molar volume of metallic sodium is 23.7 cc. Each atom of Na contributes its single 3s electron to the conduction electron gas. Determine number one is the number the number of electrons per unit volume and second is Fermi energy F epsilon F. So, the problem says the Fermi energy is given by epsilon a because to limit t goes to 0 mu t and for ideal Fermi gas the expression for Fermi energy epsilon a p is 3 n by 8 pi v to the 2 by 3 h cross by 2 m. The molar volume of metallic sodium is 23.7 cc each atom of sodium contributes a single 3 s electron to the conduction electron gas. We need, to, we need to determine the number of electrons per unit volume and Fermi energy epsilon f. So, this is a bit very simple problem. Okay. So, 1 mole of sodium how do you do it? Okay. So, 1 mole of Na has volume point. Cc. So, if we convert this one into meter cube, we get 23.7 times 10 to the minus 6 meter cube. Okay. So, since each atom contributes one three s electron to the electron gas C 
such a volume contains Avogadro's number means 6.023 times 10 to the 23 electrons. Right. So, 1 mole means Avogadro number of atoms of sodium and each sodium atom contributes 1 3 s electrons. So, number of electrons is nothing but the Avogadro number or 6.023 times 10 to the 23. Okay. So, we have got the volume, we have got uh, the number of electrons. So, we can calculate thus number of electrons per unit volume This is nothing but number of particles per unit volume. So, this n by v this 6.023 times 10 to the 23 and volume is 23.7 times 10 to the minus 3 and the unit is meter to the minus 3. So, we get n by v is 6.023 by 23.7 times 10 to the times 10 to the 26 meter to the minus 3. So, this is the answer for the first uh, problem. Next, we discuss the answer for the seventh, second problem. Okay. So, for problem 2, we need to calculate epsilon f. So, epsilon f is 3 by 8 pi times n by v to the 2 by 3 times h cross h h to the 2 by 2 m m here is mass of electron okay so we substitute everything here we get 3 by 8 times 3.14 and n by v we just now calculated 6.023 times 10 to the 26 or we make it the 27 to simplify our problem and so we get 2.37 to the 2 by 3 h value of h we know 6.627 times 10 to the minus 34 then to the 2 and then we have 2 times 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 this is in joule unit so, we get epsilon f, if we simplify this, we get f value of epsilon f is 5.06 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. So, this is the, this was the our first problem, then uh, we consider or we discuss one more problem. So, the next problem we consider is a little bit conceptual problem. So, problem 2. consider a very simple very simple gas made up of two identical particles Suppose that each particle can be in one of the one of the three possible quantum states. quantum states so that zeta 
B is greater than zeta M B is greater than zeta F T. The terms B E M D and F D have their own meanings and zeta is nothing but probability that the two particles are found in the same state by probability that the two particles are found in the or in different states. So, problem number 2 states consider a very simple gas made up of two identical particles. Suppose that each particle can be in one of the one of the three possible quantum states. We need to prove that zeta B e is greater than zeta M B greater than zeta F D. The terms B means Bose Einstein distribution, M B means Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, and F D means uh, Fermi Dirac distributions. And zeta is nothing but the ratio of probability that the two particles are found in the same state to probability that the two particles are found in different states. So, solution. for B, so first we consider particles for, for B statistics we have two particle identical particles and uh, three different quantum states. So, these are the three states and we have two particles. So, two particles can be present in state 1. or one particle in state 1, one particle in state 2, one particle in state 1, another particle in state 3 or both the particles are present in state 2 or one particle in state 2, another particle in state 3 and all both the particles are in state 3. So, these are the possible uh, distributions when we have two particles and three quantum states and the particles are following B E statistics. So, how many distributions we have here? Six distributions out of six distributions three for three distributions we get both the particles in the same states and three particles uh, or when for rest three uh, distributions we found that three particles are present uh, two particles are present in two different states. So, the probability of, of having both the particles are present in the same state is 3 by 6 and the probability of having the particle having the particles present in two different states is 
it is again 3 by 6. So, zeta B e is 3 by 6 by 3 by 6, so you get 1. Now, for MB statistics, so particles are distinguishable here. So, for MB statistics, we will first have the possible distribution. So, we have three states and we are labeling the partic identical particles as particle 1 and particle 2 okay? and then we will put the particles in different states. So, both the particles can be here, particle 1 and particle 2 both are in, in first state number 1 and then particle 1 is here and particle 2, particle 1 is in the first state and particle 2 is in the is in the second state or we can have particle 1 in the second state and particle 2 in the first state. Okay. Similarly, we can have both the particles in the state 2 or we can have particle 1 in state 2 and particle 2 in state 3 or we can have particle 2 in state 2 and particle uh, uh, 1 in state 3. And then we have both the particles in state 3 or again we can have particle 1 in state 1 and particle 2 in state 3 or we can have particle 2 in state 1 and particle 1 in state 3. So, how many distributions possible here? So, we get 9 uh, distribution here out of 9 distributions. Okay, so, total 9 possible distributions we have. So, number, so the probability, probability having both particles are present in the same state. is 3 by 9, right? And probability having the particles present in different states is 6 by 9. So, zeta m, m b is 3 by 9 by 6 by 9. So, gives us half. Now, for b for if the statistics since no two particles can be present in the same quantum state. So, the probability, the probability having both the particles are present in the same quantum state
is 0, right. So, zeta f d is 0. Thus, we can write zeta b is greater than zeta m b, which is greater than zeta f d. So, we can prove it, right. So, this problem based on distinguishability, indistinguishability concept. Thank you.